This is Formula One Championship Edition for the PlayStation 3. And the only thing that I know about Formula One racing is that I don't know anything about Formula One racing. Car condition indicator is showing green tires. They've heated up nicely now. I shouldn't say that. I know that they race cars. Like, it's not boats or wagons. It's not that sport where they release dogs to chase rabbits. I think that's coursing, and that would be a great video game. So we established that Classic Game Room doesn't know anything about F1 racing in particular. However, I do love auto racing video games. And I always have. Starting with Indy 500 on the Atari 2600, Pole Position, Pole Position 2, Super Monaco GP on the Sega Genesis. I, I've been a huge fan of the Gran Turismo series since day one, Forza 2. And I couldn't wait to get my hands on F1 Championship Edition, knowing full well that F1 auto racing is completely different than the style of racing in Gran Turismo or Test Drive Le Mans or Forza 2. Now I've played F1 games before and I know they're incredibly challenging, much faster than the other kinds of cars, and the handling is of course uh, far more precise. So they're a challenge to drive in video games and I have a feeling that they're even more of a challenge to drive in real life. starters let's look at the incredible track selection I believe these are all real tracks around the world and they're modeled quite well these are about some of the most well rendered detailed tracks that I've ever seen in any video game and these absolutely blow away the tracks that they have in Forza 2 and Gran Turismo 5 have any of you guys seen that episode of Top Gear where Richard Hammond attempts to drive an F1 car around a track and he can barely do it well, that's about how I felt in this game. I can normally pick up any driving game and usually do quite well at it. This game proved to be quite a challenge, to put it mildly. So to kick off this review, I'll say this to sum up everything I'm about to say about this game. It's an excellent game if you love driving games, if it's the only driving game that you're going to be playing for a long time. This is not really a pick up and play kind of game. You need to practice, you need to master it, and if you do that, and if you also have a rudimentary understanding of F1 racing, I think you will love this game. There's a number of tracks in here that you may be familiar with from other driving games like Suzuka, Monte Carlo, Silverstone. I started off playing on those tracks just to get a feel for the game and a feel for the cars. And as a general rule, they're much harder to drive uh, when you're driving at about twice the speed. The game has no margin for error. It has a number of different difficulty settings, and I'll get into that in a moment. But if you play with damage on and you touch anything, that's it. Uh, you have wheels flying every which way, your wing goes sailing off, and you pretty much end the race. Normally when playing any game, I tend to just start on medium. But not this game. Now, uh, me medium basically hurt my pride. I was forced to start on easy and turn damage off. And even then it was still challenging. When you get better at it, then you can move up to medium and then turn damage on. The level of detail that they've put into here is, is incredible. You, you can see that just by looking at the screen when you're driving. There's far more numbers and arrows and blinking things than there are on other racing games. And they all mean something. Not entirely sure what some of them are. You can modify the race itself and your car in pretty much every way conceivable. You can do everything from tweaking the, the, the wings and the camber, uh, like, on, like on the other racing games I've mentioned. 
for the races themselves, you can race the full distance, you can race 10%, 20% of the distance, increase tire wear, take off tire wear, you have pit stops. In fact, you're actually involved with the pit stops to a degree, if you notice that in my footage. The graphics and the sound are stunning. There's a guy talking to you throughout the race, telling you what's going on, and even the detail in that is, uh, is quite good. You can start a full career with your own driver and name them. I named my driver Wind Squid, of course, in honor of the legendary space flying rocket squid. And when you go through career, it's, it's very involved and takes a long time. You go through this process where you're answering emails and you go to trials and you have to try out for various teams. And then you go to races and I felt like I was spending more time in qualifying than I was actually driving. But again, if you're really into F1 racing, I think you'll probably get a grasp of that better than I did. And certainly qualifying is important. I, I tend to like to pick up these games and just play them, so I was doing the quick races most of the time where you pick an already existing driver from real life and a race team and a race car and just dive into a race, pick whatever track you want, and uh, go through it. I found the driving controls using the standard PlayStation 3 controller to be a bit, uh, a bit twitchy. I think that with some more practice I could have gotten better at it. I think if you really want to play this game, a steering wheel might be your best option, considering the high degree of realism surrounding the rest of the game, adding a wheel might be uh, the best thing for you. Lycan and Leeds out of the first corner, he's followed by Alonso. Next is Fisichella. Here come the leaders into turn two. Raikkonen still leads. He's followed by Alonso. Next is This is me playing my Gran Turismo style on this game, just trying to run these other cars out of my way. Ideally, I would have equipped machine guns to the front of this car, but they didn't have the spy hunter option. Or the extra modification where you can turn your car into Mirage from the Transformers, turn into a giant robot, and then destroy all your competition by stomping on them. Maybe they'll bring that into the sequel. That's just about the fastest you've been to the second sector in this session. In conclusion, what I'll say is if you're used to playing games like Gran Turismo or Forza 2, you're going to be in for a shock with this game, but if you give it a chance, I think that you'll really enjoy it because the driving and the graphics and the feeling of realism is incredible. It's just a lot more involving and time-consuming to get into it. So I'll have to compare this to one game that I do remember getting sucked into for for weeks and months on end, trying to jump from different teams and get on to uh, get on to Team Madonna. If you know what I'm talking about, it's Super Monaco GP for the Sega Genesis. And don't laugh because that's an awesome video game that came out 20 some years before this game. But that same feeling of speed and exhilaration and fun and achievement that I got with Super Monaco GP, I see in this game. If you're not used to F1 games, it's just going to take you a long time to get there. Did you see that? That was my Knight Rider spin evasion move. What I was looking to do after that was run my car through some wooden crates and then jump over a fiery explosion. It is a fur. 
there's some minor damage to his right rear tire. Retirement was the last thing he needed, but unfortunately, that's the case.